we are going to run chainsaws today guys and i hear it from you i don't have enough chainsaws on my channel well today is your day i have been making it clear about the struggles i am having with procurement getting my logs in from the loggers when you have a firewood processor that's the kind of wood you need to make firewood i don't take wood off of the tree service companies i just buy them tree length off of the loggers they go through the APA. When I do get logs that are too big, we buck them up and we put them through the Easton made axis. That's been a big help for us. Today, because of the way that the loggers unload, I always ask them, you know, we do still get big logs that won't fit through my processor and we set those right on the front of the pile. And for me, that is my motivation to get these things bucked up and moved over here and get them split. When you have a real fast processor, that's what you want to use. But I uh, use this approach so that I get these big logs cut up. But what I've learned is when they're in the middle of a big pile, it takes a while for me to, uh, I'll work, I'll nibble around them and they sit there for a long time. So what I've been doing today, guys, I have been forking the big logs over. And then some of these are pretty ugly. They got some rot in them. And these will be going into my furnace. Nothing's going to get wasted. But you can see the size of these. You know, here's 25 inch. And I have a giant oak that's next. I thought that maybe I can show you what we're up against. All right, guys, come on over here and I'll show you. The last load log hauler Jesse brought had four big logs in it. And... He lays them right on the front, and these are the first ones that I go for. The first three I've taken over here, and they've been bucked up. They're ready to be split. The last one is this giant oak, guys. And this thing here weighs a ton. And I know that my tractor is not even going to be able to pick it up. This is a this is a 23-inch log. But it's got some weird shape to it also. It's got some branches coming out. And on this end, you know, it's just got some, uh, it's got a lot of busy stuff going on here. So I'm just going to cut this up into manageable sections. And I'm going to fork it over to where I uh, buck the logs up, guys. I thought that uh, today's video, I can just show you... Um, me cutting up these logs and this is one of the challenges with big logs you got to have a big saw something big and powerful that can get this thing cut up easy and i think i got just the tool today guys the dolmar 7900 with hd filter kit one bad dude what you didn't you didn't think i was going to use that battery powered chainsaw did you no way guys what I did, guys, my tape measure and my piece of chalk, and I've marked off my 16-inch lengths. And I'm just looking for a good strategic spot to cut this in half so that my tractor can pick this up and move it, and I can minimize the waste. So I measured from this end, and I'm going to make this end my off-cut because that's there's some bad wood out there. That will probably be going into our woodshed, all right? First thing first, let's buck this log in half. <laughs> That's a big log, man. Uh, you always got to be on your toes when you're cutting, huh? But here we go. This is uh, this is 16 inch, but man, that's a nice looking log. This is a pin oak, and I'm smelling it. It smells awful right now. But let's get this forked over, and we're going to buck this thing up, guys. Here we go.
we're going to cut this big heavy end off and then I'll probably just buck the rest laying on the ground. When it gets too short, you know, you're getting kind of close to the steel of that grapple. And, um, but I'll just make it a little easier on me for this first cut. This Dolmar is so bad, it not only bucks the log, but it splits it in half when it's done with it. And here's my next cut, guys. And man, you know, it's right up against the steel of the grapple, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, and that'll just save me an extra, um, extra cut, you know, sitting on the ground, all right? So, uh, I don't know, you just need to pay attention. One little nick and your chain's done, and you know, it's really not worth all that um, cutting it too close, but I think we got some good space here. Let's go see, uh, let's see what we can do. I saw this log when it came in. It had a big split that went all the way up the middle of it. So we're getting uh, some extra help here for when it hits the ground. All right, so the next, I got two more cuts left on this. Instead of messing with it on the grapple, I'm just gonna set it on the ground and we'll just, um, we'll cut it like this and just try not to hit the pavement with, with the chain. With the remainder, I'm gonna take an extra step and just make sure my 16 inches are accurate. And I hope I did this right. The objective that I always have is 16 inch firewood. And I don't know guys, there's all kinds of different ways to measure firewood. I've tried them all. I just found a tape measure and a piece of chalk. And it's like the width of the chalk accounts for your kerf and my cuts just seem to come out pretty darn close and in this case here i'm going to have three 16 inch pieces of oak and this is going to make gorgeous firewood let's get this buck now That one's not gonna roll that good. Oh. With value added firewood, what we specialize here at Ohio Woodburner, you know, it's nice when you have the machine because it's got that positive stop, that log stops at 16 inches every time and you have perfect firewood. When you have to use the chainsaw, yeah, you know, you can try everything you can, but your cuts always seem to be a little off especially with the bigger logs, because if you come in just at a little bit at an angle, you're gonna be off probably by an inch, sometimes two inches if you have a real big log um, on the other end of it. There we go, let's get the second half of this log and let's bring it over here and get it cut up.
here's the other end of this log. I mean, it's got a lot of branches coming out of it and I just made this part my off cut. So I'm just gonna cut this off and then we're gonna be left with 16 inches all the way down. Let's see what we're left with when we cut this. having a big saw you know with the wrong with a smaller saw you could be on this for a while and when you do get these bigger logs it's nice to know that you know if you do have a big saw you can knock these out pretty quick it goes fast when you got the right tools here is the same thing guys here's my 16 inch mark and we're right up against the steel of the grapple so i am still going to cut it i think we can miss the uh the steel here uh, and that will give us another cut before we drop this on the ground. And here, it's the same thing on this end. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this one off and that's gonna leave me, I think, one cut with the section in the middle. We'll lay this on the ground and buck this up. And for your scale, guys, this is a, this is a 16 and a half inch log. This is pin oak. cut so let's lay this one on the ground and we're gonna cut it just like that guys we are done that was fast having a big saw helps guys you got to have the right tool for the job the Domar 7900 best saw in the world you know how you know how I feel about oak guys it smells and I, I don't wish you could smell it, but take my word for it. It smells awful. When I smell oak, I go back in time to when I was in school. And you remember when the kid would throw up in the hallway and the janitor would come by and spray that stuff? Uh, that's what oak smells like to me. Oh, the other problem I have with oak, you know, when you sell seasoned firewood, it takes forever to dry out. I had oak that was 18 months old, smaller split, and I tested the moisture content. It was still reading 40%. Uh, I just, I'm not a fan of oak. But I've picked up two restaurants and their smoker, you know, the, the wood doesn't provide the heat. Uh, it's a gas smoker, but they have a compartment that the wood goes in. They like oak, so they don't specify the moisture content and uh, they like the bigger splits so i says i'm your guy one thing for sure guys if you ever do get a firewood processor don't throw away your saw you're still gonna need it 
and you, it doesn't matter what processor you have well maybe but if you have a processor you're going to come across logs that don't fit into it and you're going to need a saw to buck those up and that was my challenge and that's why you know we have a great firewood processor but we've added a excellent easton made axis splitter when i get these bucked up this is just a matter of the the lift putting these up on the table and getting them split but here you go don't throw away your saw this is a non-catalyst uh, year dolmar this is the 7900 and it is a bad dude uh, and I have a 32 inch bar for it as well if this 24 inch bar doesn't do me do me any good so that is my message though you know you can still have fun with firewood because you know running the chainsaws is what the fun stuff is so you can still get your fix running chainsaws this last load that came in we had four big logs on it it's just a matter of getting them bucked up getting them ready to go through the machine I'll probably split these later today when it cools off and these will be ready to stack in the morning. One thing for sure, having the Bobcat CT2040 and that grapple, the Titan attachment grapple, home run. That has really changed our process here. Guys and gals, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And as I have promised, I've come through for you with some chainsaw action. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. All right, and please subscribe to the channel. We post videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Last thing, please check out our online store for our t-shirts and our stickers. All proceeds go to my daughter to help pay for her college. And I hope that everyone has a great day.